Okay, so let's say that we have this image, and this image is already discrete in a space and in, in, and in values. And we can do two things. One is to discretize even more the domain. This is called the domain. This is called the domain. This is called the range. And the other one is. And the other one is to discretize even more this one. So this is quantitative. <coughs> so these are the two operations that we will do today. So I have a, already a, a discrete image, but I can discretize even more in the space, or I can discretize even more in values. OK, so. Let's do that. So we have already seen the main ideas of, of both of them. This is just a reminder that true images in real uh, real life they are not discrete, they are continuous. So images are continuous, so they go R squared to Y. So they are not they're continuous in space and they're continuous in, in values. Uh, and this process here, this process here, I don't know which process this process here, this is in that, we call it sampling. And the important parameter there is the, the, the uh, the space distance between nearby pixels, so what is the pixel size? And, and the other one is this one that we have called quantity. We also call it quantity. So, this slide here tries to um, show both processes. So you have the continuous image. This continuous image is pixelated, so you are sampling in a space, but values are continuous. And you are quantizing now, so we are going from here to there. So now we have discretized the values, but we haven't discretized the space. And, and in the computer, what we have is both. Okay, so yeah, this is uh, yeah this this delta um, c c plus one delta all this we have already uh, reasoning in this in this uh, scheme here so here so what you are doing is also something. You will take logs. This is not the only way of doing it, okay? but you will <coughs> take logs and and uh, compute the yeah, the average in the that uh, in those logs. Okay, actually, this is equivalent to this process. So let's say I have my image, and now. I compose with this kernel. So I compose with this kernel that has one four. So I compose it here, put it there, and I will produce a new image. I will use this one. This is not the quantized, this is just a convolution. Okay, so I compute the convolution with this. This is equal to this. So Convolutions has the same size as the input point. But when I'm convolving, these four values will go there. Okay, so these four values will go there. And I will use a different color so that uh, you can see well. These four values will go there. And then I will use again the same color. These four values will go there. OK? 
Okay, so uh, so far I have done the convolution, and now I will do the sampling. So the sampling, my sampling will be green now. So I will take this value, this value, this value, and so on. And I will produce a new image. So I do now something uh, uh, an operation called decimation. So the decimation by factor delta is this thing that you go in the steps of delta. And then my result, my result will be just an image, but now there's only four values. Okay? This four. So the down sample image, and this is something that you already know from uh, signal processing. So I have an, a down sample image. This down sample image, uh, I will use x and y. x and y is, you take the original image, i, you convolve my kernel was blue. You convolve it with the kernel. Now you take this one and you do the down sampling. You do the down sampling by a factor of delta. <coughs> so this process that we have put here in this formula, this process there, I can express in this way. I can express it in this way. So this sum, this double sum that we had down there, it is a convolution. And, and this, this trick of, I don't know if you can highlight it in way. So this trick of using a, a variable and multiplying that variable by delta and r plus one delta, this is the double sum. So I'm taking the steps in delta. And now you see the trick. So this is the simplest way to do down sampling. Because now, if you see it in this way, now you are much more free and you can design your kernels the way you like. So this kernel here is the simplest kernel that you can think of. It is not the, actually the best kernel. This kernel is causing a lot of problems in, in Fourier space. Um, actually, you, you, you can think of one of the problems it may be causing. So we are decimating by delta. So if we decimate by delta, it is it appears a bit here. So the sampling rate will be twice the original sampling rate. So, what can this kernel be causing? So, what are the problems that normally are associated to the sampling rate? Eliasing. So, it can cause eliasing. It does cause eliasing. So, this kernel causes eliasing. Which is the best kernel that you can have? This is C. So, Instead of this one, you have a better kernel that uh, I don't know how to draw it, but uh, it is a sink. A sink in both directions. And so it's a sink. What is the Fourier transform of this kernel? So let's do the Fourier transform. So the Fourier transform of these is something like this. Fully transform of these, so let's go the axis. This is a kernel, so let's say this is kernel one, and I'm plotting just one of the one of the uh, <coughs> one of the periods. The fully transform of this one, this is kernel two, a kernel. This is only that. It is this one. And I can design it to go exactly to pi half. So let's say that this is pi half. So all these eight, 
all these areas here are the ones that are causing the amazing. Because this one from pi half to pi is zero, I will not have any amazing. Why? You may remember, again, this is from signal processing. So you may remember, when you do this down sampling by a factor of delta, what you are doing is expanding your, your spectrum by a factor of delta. So we are, let's follow, let's track these, these operations in Fourier. So let's say that um, my, this is my Fourier transform of I. Yeah, I will not put, when there is no doubt, I will not put the arguments. Okay, so let's say that this goes from minus pi pi. Okay, and then it is repeated. Pi to pi. Okay, now I'm multiplying with the Fourier transform of my kernel. But my Fourier transform of my kernel, my kernel was blue, uh, this kernel. So my kernel, kernel 2, is this one. So like this one everywhere, up to minus pi half, pi half. And then here, 2. Okay, so it is also so 2 pi plus pi half, and this one is 2 pi minus pi half, and so on. So I multiply by this. So the multiplication, the multiplication would be this. So now, this is I multiplied by K. You know, the hat is fully transformed. So my spectrum will be like this. And then 2 pi, I have a repetition. Minus 2 pi, I have a repetition. This is pi, this is minus pi, <coughs> this is pi. So, so far, we have only done the, we have only done the part of the convolution. Now we do the downsampling. And when you do the downsampling, what happens? So, let's say that I have a signal. I have a signal. And this signal is down sampling, down sample conversion of this one. So what happens with the Fourier transform? So with the Fourier transform, this one is A okay, over here, and this is X. Okay. This is just in the middle part. I don't want to mess with all the copies and so on, okay? But uh, in the middle part, this is what happens. Okay, by a factor of delta. So now, if I'm doing the downsampling of this, I'm doing the downsampling of this, the spectrum will broaden. Okay? So that is what that equation is saying. And I, I, I'm aware that there, are, there is a sum here, but I don't want to mess up the sum. Okay? So, and it will broaden. So now, the downsampling version of this so this is now down sample. The spectrum will go. So this that happens at pi half will move to pi. So it will go up to pi. And this will go up to minus pi. And then it will be repeated. So this point here is this point here. So when this happens at pi half, and because of the downsampling, it happens at pi. And the same on the other side. So that's why, that's why this curve, this curve that completely removes all these uh, all these frequencies, is much better than this one. It's much better than this one. But it doesn't completely remove them. Okay, so this tail here will make that will make so this is expanding and the other kernel was blue. 
So this part will be somehow attenuated. And this will also be attenuated. But it will be added. So these two signals will be added. So that is the aliasing. And that happens if your signal is not bandwidth. So if it is bandwidth to pi half, it doesn't matter which of the two that you use. Because anyway, the signal doesn't exist, so it doesn't matter if you use a, a, an ideal low pass signal or a kind of approximation to the low pass signal. Okay, so let's look now. Yeah, so this is the simplest way to do uh, low pass filter. And now uh, there is another trick. There is an amp sample. So once I have produced the, once I have produced the down sample, maybe, now I do a, an amp sampling of it. Now we will do the same code that we were doing. So now we will create the pixelated image. The pixelated image, as it is in the slides, it is, okay, so you take your original image, take your original image, you go more with, with the kernel, you design your kernel the best way you can. Now you do the down something. Now you do the down something. This result, you do an app sample. Do an app sample. So, an app sample, again, now you know this from signal processing again. So, an app sample, so this process of just taking one every delta values, that was this operation here. This operation here, this operation is called decimation. decimation. And you know that the down sampling, down sampling is convolution followed, followed by the down sampling, by decimation. Sorry. So first you convolve and then you do the, the, the decimation. And so let's put it here in a different way. This is the way you are seeing <coughs> the linear systems. So what is the name of this kernel here? Anti-aliasing filter. And now you understand why. Because it is anti-aliasing filter. Because I know that the, the spectrum will expand when I do the down sampling. So first, before expanding it, I have to make sure that it is zero at high frequency. So I first fit there, and then I do the down sample, then decimation. Okay, this is decimation, but is the, what is the opposite of that? So I have a signal. I have a signal. Excellent. So I use delta. If n is a multiple of delta, and zero otherwise. This is the opposite operation in that. Uh, I'm not aware that it has a specific name. Okay? But these two, sorry, these two signals behave in this way, just a reminder of how they work. So let's say that they have an X of N. Say this is my X of N. Just a few samples. And then this signal here 
this one, the decimated one, is taking one every two pixels. So y if I here, I'm taking one every two. So I will take this one, I will take this one. <coughs> and this happens, this happens at two. But here it is happening at one. This sample, the same sample happens at one. Okay, and then I say that I have this one, and then my next will be this one. Okay. And this is decimation. This one is the opposite. So this is losing, uh, dropping samples from the original. This one is taking all the samples from the original. So it's taking all the samples. So I'm taking all the samples and then I'm putting zero. So in between, so I have zero, so a sample zero, then the next sample zero, the next, the next sample zero, the next sample zero, and so on. And the other side is the same. So this is the opposite. The, here we are not dropping any samples. We are putting samples in between. And I have done this representation because I'm sure that you know the opposite of this one. So when I want to do a down sampling, first I compute an integration kernel and then I do the decimation. When I want to do an up sampling, when I want to do an up sampling, I have to do the opposite. So first, I have to do my up sampling operator by a factor delta. But then I have to convolve. Okay, let's make it clear. I have to convolve with my kernel, and then I can produce. Because otherwise, I will stay here. I will stay here in which I have a lot of zeros in between. So what are sensible kernels? So here what we are doing is expanding, kind of doubling the number of samples that I have in my signal. So how what are sensible kernels here? So let's see what's a different color. So now I will do my convolution with kernel 1, with kernel 2. And I will use two different kernels. So one of them is this kernel. So this is my axis, and this one. So this kernel, when I compose this one with this, simply what I'm doing is repeating every sample. So the result will be like this. So I'm taking a sample, repeating it, taking a sample, repeating it, taking a sample, uh, yeah, taking a sample, repeating it. This is why. Does it make sense? Yeah, it is a way of feeling. What is a, another possible uh, interesting kernel I will use by like this time? Why don't you join your samples with lines and then you evaluate your line there? Uh, I have the only lucky because this one crosses around C. Okay, but why don't you join with lines and you evaluate your lines there? Okay, I can do that. This is my kernel. This is my kernel. It is one. So this is kernel, this is one, <coughs> this is one half, and this is one half. So I convolve with a triangle, and then I will copy, sorry, I will copy my, my I will copy my signals. So these ones are simply copies. These ones are copies, but the ones in between will make them red are the interpolated values. So this will be y, this will be 
y of n. This is n. So these ones here they are called interpolation. And it is you join these two lines and you evaluate in the middle. So if I want to do the enough sampling, <coughs> what I have to do is the opposite to the down sampling. So in down sampling, I first convolve with the kernel and then I did the decimation. And this kernel, the purpose of it was to avoid the radiation. Now I'm doing the opposite. Now I'm first creating a space for my new signals, for my new samples. So I'm doing this upsampling operator. And then I'm convolving with something because otherwise I will leave zeros there. I don't want to have zeros. So I want to have a smooth function. So then I need a convolution. So these two convolutions, the, the purpose are different. So this is to avoid the liaison. This is just to fill the samples in between. Go to here. Uh, in the slides, he's doing now the upsampling, and he's simply repeating the value, the pixel value. So what he's using is this kernel. It's using this kernel that repeats the samples. It's using this kernel here, this kernel here that repeats the sample. So that's why you get this kind of results. Okay. Okay. So this is the, for instance, let's say that we are doing a, a down sampling, a pixelization by a factor 10, not a factor 2. So you take uh, you take 10 pixels, so blocks of 10 pixels, you compute the average of those blocks, and then you repeat the same value 10 times, 10 times in each direction. So our kernel now would be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 in both directions. And then here are some categories. So this is just a you use blocks that are huge, 256, 256, yeah. So if we want to pick an image, we have to uh, always uh, down something first and then uh, up something. Yeah, this operation pixelization is defined like that. Depends on what is your purpose, but yeah, if you want to create this kind of effects where you have an image and then you reduce the the, the, the solution, you increase the pixel size, and you repeat all the time the same values, then you have to do both operations. Yeah. Yeah. And you can do it locally. So you can do it, for instance, here. You have a picture, and then this only in this region you apply that operation. Okay, so yeah, very simple operation. This. Any question now? No. Okay, so let's uh, let's make a break. Yeah. Yes, we need. Thank you. 
¿Ya ha hecho las actividades del proyecto? Sí. ¿Qué ha hecho? Pues hice eh, las hice las dos años, bueno, son tres, pero la tercera en principio me la ha convalido y las primeras dos hice. ¿La convalida con qué? Eh, si me voy a Estados Unidos, al curso de Boston, que hacen ahí. ¿Lo vas el año que viene? Una, sí, pretendo ir. Sí. Y, y nosotros nos hice unos proyectos de. Eh, está del arte de sus versiones en inglés, de una de electrocardiograma, me parece, o electro, no sé, una de estas, y en la otra de la TV. Muy parecida a las dos. ¿La mayoría de los proyectos son de estado de arte o son de hacer cosas? Ay, mitad, mitad, más o menos. Pero yo, para mí, es mucho más fácil hacer una versión que otro proyecto de la es más fácil, claro. Más para aprender fácil. más por lo otro. ¿Eh? Hombre, eso, eso otro. seguro, pero, pero sí, a mí además es que ese tipo de cosas no me interesan tanto. ¿A qué te gustaría ir a la Pues no tengo ni idea, pero sé que esto no, no, o sea, no me gusta mucho la carrera en general. La estudio porque es que me interesaba y voy a decir, bueno, quiero, quiero saber de qué va, pero no dedicarme. Y al final me he metido y esto era mucho más difícil de lo que pensaba que iba a ser, pero bueno, ya lo voy a acabar. ¿Entonces qué quería Pues lo que vamos a hacer en Boston, que supuestamente es como gestión de empresas de biotecnología y tal, eso me interesa más que, el, que, pues eso, que la ingeniería en sí. Yo trabajar con pues, cosas de medicina, tal, pero más de gestión que de... Que pero más que gente para todo. Sí, sí, no, a ver, bueno, a ver, eso es lo que pretendo, es saber, porque también yo supongo que me encasillan un poco, ¿no? De, 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 de lo que de, 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 Siempre te va a encasillar, ¿no? O sea, siempre que empieces a trabajar una cosa, cada vez vas profundizando más en eso. Pero no es encasillarse tampoco, profundizar en eso. Pero bueno, a ver, que aún hay muchas ideas, pero vamos, hasta que invito a trabajar, yo creo que no voy a saber realmente. Ya que hay que empiece y haga prácticas con los Ya
sea tan mal. Ya, ya, no creo que sea tan mal. So we have discretized part of the space. I may want to know about that. Doctor, doctor, I have a lot of pain for the doctor. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? So now we will discretize. We will discretize our colors. So we have already seen. Uh, this idea that colors are represented by uh, three channels. Uh, so now, uh, so let's say we have a, an image x to y. When I don't want to, to say specifically from where to where, number of rows, number of columns, we normally use this thing. Okay? So it is some discrete. So this is the set of integer numbers. So some uh, set of discrete indexes. And then, now I will be careful here. Now we go from 0 to 0 to 255 Q. So that means that we have three values. So we have these three values. They are all of the same size. So each one of them has eight bits. And these are the RTB. So uh, with this, I can represent 256 different values. Here, 256 different values of 256. And 
how many different colors I can represent with this. So I can, I have, so what is the size, what is the, what is the size of this set? How many elements we have in this set? Okay, so this is a set, how many elements we have in there? Okay, so this is, so these bars are the size of the set. Uh, so we have 256 values. 256 is 2 to the 8. So 2 to the 8, and because I can have any possible combination of them, so it will be Q. So this is 2 to the 24, and this is 2 to the 4 times 2 to the 20. This is approximately a million. So this is 2 to the 4, that is 16 million, more or less. Okay, so we have an image with 60 billion colors, so that is an RGB image with 8 bits each one. But if I could also have a, a, an image with only 16 colors, and with only 16 colors means that I have used the color map. So I have used the color map, and then I tell you which 16 colors I want to use. And we have reduced the, the number of colors by a million. But it's still, okay, this is not a very good image, but uh, I still we recognize most of the thing, and it is low quality, but uh, this one, how, how much in terms of, of beads, how many fewer beads we have. So now my image, my, my quantized image, it goes, from z squared now to 2, to 0, 1, 15. So for this, I only need 4 bits. Before, for every pixel, I needed 24 bits. So I have saved 20 divided by 24 bits. So that is uh, I don't know, about 83%. So we have removed 83% removed of the information. And it's still, you can see the image radically well. OK, so yeah, here is a representation of that quantization. So let's say that we have a, a very fine uh, uh, range of, of colors and intensities. And you want to, to uh, scale it or to quantize it to just 16 values. So something you can do is, okay, so I will divide this range into 16 equal pieces, so all these segments, and then for each segment, I will represent the segment by whatever, the beginning of the segment, the middle of the segment, the end of the segment. So let's say it is the middle of the segment. So all these values, we could represent it by a single one, this one. All these values by a single one, that is the average. All these values by the average. Okay. And here you have the uh, same image, but now it is a uh, gray scale. And uh, we represent it with uh, 8 bits, 7 bits, 6 bits. And down to 5 bits, I would say there is almost no difference. So, and we have reduced the, the amount of information by 3 over 8. We have removed 3 out of 8 pixels. Now, you, you start to see uh, videos that are very flat. Okay. This one. But even this one, it is just 1 bit per pixel. And uh, we uh, recognize most of the details there. 2 bits. 2 bits is bad quality image, but I still do recognize most of it. So we don't need so many 16 billion colors. And yeah, this we have discussed. So uh, let's say that I want to reduce this to just a couple of colors. I can complete the average of this, the average of that, and that would be my colors. So you, you can use the scheme that you like, but you have only two degrees of colors that you can use. And the same, the same applies, but now with four, with eight, and so on. 
Okay, so what can I use this for? Okay, so let's say that this is my region ID. This is my contrast enhancement. So I can take, for instance, I can take the, we have seen the image equalization on, on that. So I can uh, take the minimum maximum value. So let's say I have an image. So I have an image. This is my image there. I can compute the histogram of that image. So what is the value name? What is the probability of observing each one of those values? And let's say that my histogram looks like this. This is a discrete one, but I have drawn it uh, continuously. So let's say that this is my minimum value, this is my maximum value. So one thing I can do is, okay, you're not exploiting the whole, the whole uh, range. So I can transform this image. We have seen this already. So I can transform this image to a new one, that is this one. So this is... 255 by minimum, maximum, and I minus okay, So this one will exploit the full histogram. So now if I draw the histogram of this one, J, of J is my gray value in my new image. Now, for the same thing, but it now we will go from 0 to 5. And we have called this. Uh, 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 this operation we have called it contrast enhancement. So I can do that, but I can do something different. Okay, so I can take only the, the dark values, and I can do that operation to the dark values only. So this is this one. Or I can do it to the bright values only. So I, I do that operation to the bright values, and I have that one. And this is if I do it with 8 bits, this is if I do it with 16 bits. And you don't see much of a difference between the two. Okay, so let's let's look at the histograms. So these are the originals, these are the originals. And uh, this is when you do the operations with 16 bits, but at the end you quantize with uh, 8 bits again. So that means this operation, if I do it with 16 bits, right, if I'm allowed to use 16 bits, this value here, this value here, now it will become 65 by 135. This is a very funny number, so it is 2 to the 16 minus 1. This number here, this number here is 2 to the 8 minus 1. So if you are using 8 bits, you can go back to this value. If you are using 60 bits. So first you scale to, two six, to 16 bits, and once you have that operation, now you reduce it again to 8 bits. Okay, so these are the histograms we are watching here. So what is the main difference that we see between these two, histo these two sets of histograms? Here we have holes. And we understand where the holes come from. So they come from values that are never occupied by my 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 operation. So my operation, my my new image is never using these values. And we you would remember, for instance, whenever you are increasing the contrast, so let's say that at a particular region, at a particular region, you have uh, so Let's say that your image is twice, it is this one, okay? this is the transformation. Let's say that this goes, this takes the value 0, 1, 2, so on. This will take the values 0, 2, 4, <coughs> So there are values that you never use. So whenever this factor is larger than 1, there are, will be values that you don't use. And it creates these holes. But when you do it at 16 bits, you don't have those holes. 
So it is something very subtle. So I, when you look at the images, you don't know this. There are holes or internal holes. You, you don't know this. You don't see. But technically, the quality of this image is much better than the quality of this one. Okay. And uh, okay, so let's take that back. And you do an enhancement with 8 bits, with 16 bits, and and but yeah, we, we know that one of them has these holes while the other one doesn't have. Okay, and uh, what is in the lower 8 bits? So let's say that we Take, we take this image, let's take an image, we have an image. So at, them, at a particular location, let's say that we have this image here, x, y, and at a particular location, I will draw the representation in bits. So it, it, it is taking that value. This is the R and G and B chunk, and it has uh, uh, eight bits. And then I do the following. I split each one of the channels in two parts. The first part, I will put two zeros. So there are four zeros here, four zeros here, four zeros there. And whatever is here, it stays. Okay? So the lower half stays, the lower part of this stays. And the lower part of that space. And I represent that image. What is it? It's mostly noise. So that means that all this part doesn't contain any information. Here it contains a bit of information. Okay, so I see some structure there related to the image. But otherwise, it is mostly noise. So that means that if, instead of using 8 bits, so Let's say that now I construct a new image. I construct a new image. It will be my image J. My image J. But that's the opposite. So it sets the lower four bits to zero. So these ones will stay to zero, will be fixed to zero. And this, the upper part of the red space, the upper part of the green space, the upper part of the blue space. How this image will look like? What do you expect? It is noise, it is very similar to the original. This is the original completely destroyed. What do you think? So we have seen what is the effect of putting these upper parts to zero. So now if I keep the and I set to zero the lower part, what do you expect? It's like a computer. Okay, it is a multi-stability. More people agree with that. More colors. E? More colors. Uh, you will not have more colors. You will have fewer colors. Number of values will be smaller. Mm -hmm. oh. That you don't like. Will more or less stay the same. So, if the lower part doesn't have any information, that means that the information is in the upper part. If I keep the upper part, will it more or less stay the same? Except for this region, that it might it might have some small differences. And then I can use, exploit that to uh, <clears throat> to a particular application. Okay, so let's say uh, that. I want to imprint some kind of copyright to my images. Okay, so I have that image, and I want everyone to know that I created that image. So how can I hide some information so that I can recover it? And this is uh, this is. So I did it with four bits and four bits. So this is four and four, four and four. So 
but I can I can do with six and two if I want. So I can create my image. Uh, we have the three channels, and then my speed is like keeping these six pins. This will stay, and this will be set to zero. The same for the other two channels. So here we have eight bits and only the six bits. So it stays more or less the same. And if I compute the histogram, this is the histogram of this one. And it is logical that it is this one. So when you have six bits, you have six bits. What is the lowest color you can have? Always color you can have, but the six bits to zero, this will always be zero. This two will always be zero. But this is the next color I can have. This is one, and then this two will be zero. But this is color zero, this is what color four. So my colors will go in groups of four because I'm the last two bits are zero. Okay, so my histogram should have colors. Uh, and, and then I can do the, this trick. Okay, so I have a different image. So I have this image that I have put zeros there. I have another image, let's say image two. So I have image two. And for image two, I do the opposite. Okay, so I, I have uh, my RGB channels. I will take the upper two bits. Okay, so I will take these two bits. These are two, these are six, and this will stay. This is the uh, upper part of image two. And then I can combine these two. So let's say this is my upper part of image one. And then I can construct a new image that is the, the red channel is this upper part. So the upper part of image one, and then the upper part of image two. And this way is eight bits, because I have six and two. So this makes eight bits. So this is a system that can produce that. Do you remember these R shifts, L shifts operations with bits? Okay, so you take an image, you R shift by two, Left shift by two. Okay, so let's see what happens. So let's say I have an image. Okay, so I have an image, I have all these bits of that image. Now I do it left by two. So left by two. For this one, I'm right shifting by six, so I will only keep the two most important digits, and then I will compute an XOR between the two. But if you move two positions to the right and then two positions to the left, you're not going to stay at the same position. Yeah. 
these are seven, the space at the same position. What is different is that at the beginning, I had these two values, but because of the shift, I have lost them. Ah, okay. When you move one meter, it goes. Uh, it goes out. Yeah. You, you cannot do that. You, yeah, there are uh, operations that can keep them. So it depends on how you do the, the, the bit shift, but uh, this one doesn't keep. The other one is called cyclic shift. So the cyclic shift, these two bits would go in from the other side. Okay, so now I compute the XOR between the two. So I, I'm just making, I'm just constructing this image. Okay, so let's see the result. So this is uh, the second image. So the second image is in the lower bits. And now, if I, let's say that I want to recover it, okay? So I have this image. I want to recover image too. So if you look at the image, but well, this is mostly image one. We have seen that the lowest bits, they don't, we, we are not sensible to them. What if I want to recover this image? They have to do, say, what I have to do is a right shift by six, and then this is what I will get. So I will get R equal two, that has two bits, and then six signals. But now I will be able to, to look at the second image. So we do that. We do uh, I set a right shift, it is a left shift. Left shift. Now this is what there was in the in the lower speeds. So that means that this image, this image has this but it is invisible. It is invisible. So it is in the lower speeds. So this is steganography. Steganography, stegan means hidden. So you are hiding an image into another one. And now with this, you can put your copy rights if you want. This is a very, very simple way of putting it. Okay, what if instead of six and two bits, I keep four and four bits? So I have this image. Now I have hidden another one in the four lower bits. Uh, so, and now we will recover the, the lower image. This is what was there. So this, this image was superimposed to this one, but we couldn't see. It is there, it is there, but in the lower four bits. So we are not so sensitive to the lower four bits. And, and now that we have learned this trick of separating and dealing with bits separately, what we can do is uh, all kinds of combinations. So I, I will take the lower parts, uh, the lower values of the images and apply uh, equalization or, and then for instance I can equalize the dark region there. Equalize the light regions, I can combine both. And, and there is something also very interesting that is that uh, this dithering. So adding noise in principle, it seems that it is something bad, always. But it happens that not always. Okay, so let's let's see. Okay, so let's let's take that image with eight bits. We uh, we uh, quantize it to four bits, and we have the four bits plus noise. Okay, so uh, we don't see much of a difference. Let's do it now with three bits. So again, with three bits, we don't see. With two bits. Okay, so now with two bits, this image is really bad. This image is extremely bad. You see, there are many flat areas. But it is logical because we are just using two bits to represent the colors. What about this one? Two bits plus noise. Two bits plus noise. Look, it looks much more natural. So adding noise is not always bad. 
Natural images have noise. And how much noise? Okay. Yeah. So let's say that you want to apply quantization by a factor of Q. <coughs> so you want to quantize into one, two, three bits. And so this Q is the number of bits. Let's say that the maximum value of, of your images are 255. So this sigma could take this value one fourth over n uh, times n over q. So how can I use this? This is with just one bit. With just one bit, the quantization is terrible, but the quantization plus noise is not so bad. This back, but not so bad as the other one. So how can I, can I exploit this? So if I'm adding noise, this one occupies one bit per pixel okay, for each one of the channels. This one plus noise, how many bits per pixel? Eight, again. Okay. So how can I exploit this? So let's say that you want to transfer uh, this image. You have a very small bandwidth. So what you can do is, at the transmitter, you can reduce your image to one bit. You transmit. And then in the receiver, you add noise. So the, the communication is very, very cheap. So you have the same number of bits per pixel this one will have eight bits. This one will also have eight bits because of the noise. But only one bit is coming from the original image. That's All the others is noise. But we want to use, I mean, we get the same number. To transfer this image. So let's say that there is a drawing. So you have to you have an image. An image here. Let me put this in numbers, okay? So that, uh, uh, so let's say that you have an image here. You are using eight bits per pixel per channel, and uh, it occupies eight megabytes. Now you have, you want to transfer it. So here we are at the university. You want to transfer it at home, but you are charged for uh, the amount of bytes you. Okay, so I I want you to see this image at home, but this channel is extremely expensive. Or it is very narrow; you cannot transmit at a high speed or whatever reason. You cannot transfer much there. So what I can do is I can reduce this one to one bit per one bit per channel. So now it will occupy eight times less. I transfer it, and then at the receiver I have noise. It is again a megabyte. But at home you don't care. What you care is about the communication. And this is an extreme, okay? So you can never transfer at one bit per pixel. But you get the idea. So even in these very hard conditions, I can still have an image that is more or less. Yeah. Any question related to this? Do you some application of this, also some other application of this? So let's go to iPhone. So in iPhone, in iPhone you have this article there, that it works. So for some reason it doesn't work. The problem here is, uh, let's say that you have composed an image using Photoshop, for instance. And 
I want to detect whether you have faked that image or not. Something I can do is to look at the quantization differences between pixel values. And then I can see, for instance, what are, uh, you remember the histograms with zeros in between? So I can look at those kind of things. And then I can say, okay, this part of the image has been put at a different time as this one, because the, the whole pattern is different in both places. And here, it seems, it seems that, uh, that, so the whole pattern, uh, they don't seem to be uh, particularly different. Here, it is all the time the same, all the time the same. But here, for instance, the whole patterns uh, are different. So I can tell you from, from the quantization errors, from the from these quantized differences, I can tell you whether you have uh, cut and pasted an image into another one. Because they will have different quantization patterns. Okay, no other question? If there is no other question, then we go for our exam today. Our exam today is this one.